Well, hello, Dr. Leo. This is Matt Ball with Cengage Learning. And this is a brief video on MindTap that I've created for you. Uh, when you, uh, you're getting, you've already gotten an email. The links at TCU are all ready for you to get things set up, and I'll, I'll, that'll be part of this video. So this is a, a, a sample of what MindTap is. This is actually the MindTap course for Introductory to Econometrics, 6th edition. You'll click on these three little arrows here, and this takes you to the learning path, which is right here in the middle of the screen. On the right-hand side, these are the this is the app dock. All the apps are automatically updated behind the scenes, so students never have to update any apps. It's done. It's all done behind the scenes. The way this works is anytime you see this little um, circle with a triangle in it, the arrow, that's a video. Then you have um, your various parts. Let's just jump right into it. We'll just jump into part two. So in part two, um, here's chapter 10. We'll click on chapter 10. And all the chapters are basically uh, set up pretty much the same way. You've got uh, the book, and that's illustrated by this or indicated by this book icon. There are some problem walkthroughs and there's aptly homework. I'll show you what that is. First, we'll look at the book. So I'm clicking on the book, and that brings up the book verbatim, word for word, what's in the printed text. And now I'll just click on inside one of the samples. So here we are. Let me go to another a page with maybe some more words on it. So here's some information. This is the book, again, verbatim, word for word. What students at TCU have told me, this is over the last couple of years of watching students use this, this program at TCU. And one of the things that they like most happens to be Read Speaker. And you see this little icon here. This is Read Speaker. If we click on the icon, it'll actually read the book to you. you click on play. Static models. Suppose that we have time series data available on two variables, say Y and Z, where it and ZT are dated contemporaneously. A static model relating Y to Z is it equals beta 0 plus beta 1 ZT plus at T equals 1, 2, N, 10.1. The name static model comes from... So you can even read the equations fairly well. So... That's Read Speaker. Now, to control Read Speaker, adjust it over in the app dock on the right hand side is this Read Speaker icon. You click on it, and this is where you change it fast, medium, or slow, male or female voice. Students, uh, especially if English isn't their first language, they'll put it on slow and they'll listen to it. You can also make the type or the font bigger by clicking on there. You can also use the Control Plus and and control my sign to make it bigger or smaller. But basically everything in the book is right here. Now you can add, if you want to add content, you can click on that little arrow. You can add content directly here in the book if you want to add a video or something directly into the book. Now the other way that students use this is say they come across a word they may not be sure of. Um, they can highlight it and a pop-up menu comes up, pull down menu, you can click on dictionary and it will give you well, we may have to go a little bit deeper here. It will give you the definitions. So Webster Dictionary uh, is built into this. It's right there. The other thing, um, okay, here's static model. If we click on it, uh, it'll automatically give us a definition of anything, any word that's highlighted or boldfaced. Next thing students at TCU have told me that they like is uh, they like to take their notes online actually in the text. And a lot of students will come to your classroom with their laptops and they can take their notes right here. And the way they do that is they highlight again and they say, okay, add note. And this is where they can add notes. Say this is on the test and then click save. Now you can put a note in here and click share. If you click that button, it'll share your note with the entire class. So as soon as you just click save, it saves a note right here at the top corner of the whatever paragraph they're in. Now there is a repository for all of these notes and it's over here in what's called the study hub. And I put another note in here earlier. So we have the study hub, click on notes and highlights and every note, this is a note I just took was in chapter 10, but I took one earlier in chapter two. So you can see how that works. So I click on chapter two, I'll go to where we put the note. This I also said this is on the test. So the, all the students notes will be located in one place. They can print them out if they want. Now they're looking at this note. Okay. I want to, find out I would like to find out more about that particular area that I took the note on so let me go to the book there's a blue arrow they click on that arrow that will then take them to the place in the book where they took the note so hope that makes sense so we've got this is uh, 
this is how students can take notes and put all the notes in one place. Also, we have, well, problem walkthroughs. There's a lot of material in here. These are more videos. The Apley homework is, all, you mentioned homework when we talked on the phone. The Apley homework is quite good. You may have used Apley before. It's one of our other programs, but we've integrated all of that into MindTap. So here it is. We'll click on the first question. And you, you've seen, I believe, how this works. You can give the students, say, up to uh, a few different attempts at, at doing it. Now, here is one. I, I have no idea how to do this, so I'm just going to click. I'm just going to click in here, and we'll see what happens. Um, and you click Grade It Now, and it will provide you with an explanation of what you got right, what you got wrong. You can click on Try Another Version. It will give you another sample of that question. It won't be the exact same question. So that's, um, i tell you what, let's go back. Let me choose another one. So, uh, uh, regression function. Let's try another example here. Okay. Well, this has ba basically so, sometimes you get your in percentages. I want to find a different one here. Let me find one more that changing units. Um, what's the error in the term? Let me just click on the first one. Oh, they already did that. Uh, real quick here. Thanks for your patience with me. I'm going to go to a different Apple assignment. Let me go to another chapter. I want to show one once with more words in here. Um, just to show you something a little bit different. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Scaling data. Oh, uh, here we go. Okay, so you'll have pull down. It'll be a pull down menu um, where you can give you a few choices. This is eliminates any typing areas. Now we click grade it now and you'll see where it gives you, of course I got, hey I got one right. <laughs> so it has a, a, again a more detailed information um, in the material. Uh, so you have the explanation there. Again you can try another version, continue. But that's the Apple homework and that is built in to every chapter. Okay. Now we'll click the back arrow um, so the introductory, we'll go ahead and close part one. At the very bottom, close part two. At the very bottom, you also have your appendices where you have additional information. So all of that information is in MindTap. I've gone through that really fast. The last thing I want to show you um, is over here in this area. You're probably wondering, what is this? This is our analytics. Now, I don't have any students in this particular class, so I'm going to click on Open Full Gradebook just so you can see a sample of what that's like. These are samples so you can, you can see. When your students, again, it's in the progress app. You click on the progress app and it's going to give you this information. We'll click on analytics. And this shows your, your, how engaged your students are in the course. And the idea is to, to move up and to the right. Um, we'll go ahead and click on time and course. That might be a little, give you a little more information. Um, the, the way you can use these analytics, uh, probably one of the, the, the the best things you can get out of this is you can identify at-risk students early in the process. You don't have to wait for a midterm or the wait for the first test. As students log in, um, they'll, they'll again they move from from the lower left-hand quadrant. They move up and to the right. So any students that you will see in this lower left-hand quadrant still after the first week, you can say, oh, they're not progressing. They're not using MindTap. Maybe they haven't even registered or logged in. And you can identify them and course correct early in the process. So you can say, yeah, okay, if you continue this trend, you might not do well in the course. What's happened to TCU, which is I find fascinating, is if you scroll over the dot, it will come up with a student's, uh, student's name. Now, students can see their name. They can see the other dots, but they don't know who the other dots are. Um, only you can see that. But what students at TCU, it, there ends up being some internal competition to See who can get their dot up and to the right. Uh, I thought that was kind of kind of interesting. So again, in this lower left hand quadrant, that's where you can find um, students your at risk students. So that's a brief description of the analytics. Uh, I met with Dr. Uh, Greg Dixon out of Georgia last uh, was it uh, last month. We we're in San Antonio um, in his business. He has another uh, side business on uh, calculating statistics and providing educational resources and statistical analysis. Uh, he mentioned to me that uh, they all the most of the data now shows that students perform better if there's high frequency 
and low stakes. So the more they can do something without really being penalized, the better it is. So high frequency, low stakes. Now I'll go ahead and close out this and we'll minimize this screen. And there's many other things over here. I won't go into all that. But this is a, a good overview, I believe, of what's in MindTap and how to make it work. Now, um, now we'll go into how do you get this in the canvas uh, to take a, take a look at it. You received an email earlier, well, a few minutes ago. Uh, this is the email that came to you. It says, okay, the links are live. They're in Canvas. Uh, in this email, Beth Light, uh, right here, Beth Light, she can be, she's our best friend right now. She is absolutely terrific. She's our customer success manager. She's local. Uh, she lives in Mansfield, um, and she works with many professors at TCU uh, getting their courses loaded. But you have a quick start guide. If you click on that quick start guide, that's going to give you basically all the information you need to integrate your course into Desire to Learn. So here's a, and it's all printed out. And that's fine and that's great. Um, now let's go a little bit deeper. Cengage.com slash services. And I'll put this link in the email to you. Cengage.com slash services. This website, it's one we talked about this morning, has all the information you need about MindTap. So if we click on MindTap, now it has general information, instructor's guide, there's videos down here, creating your course, copying a course, making assignments, changing the due dates, little videos on basically anything that you, you might want. We're in can't, we're in a, uh, sorry, desire to learn, which is also called Brightspace. So if we click on Brightspace, this, and now we're still under instructor, and we've clicked on Brightspace. So you have uh, again, this is your download. You can download the user guide. That's the same one we just looked at that came in the email. But here is creating your course in Brightspace by Desire to Learn. Uh, deep links. There's other material that you can ha add in here. But this is a these few videos show you quite a bit. There's also long, longer training sessions uh, that that you can look at. But I think the short videos may be the way to go. If you click on student. This is a self-training, uh, this is a, a, a video that you can post the link into your, your syllabus online and show students how to register and log into Brightspace. If I click on that, the video will be here. I'm going to copy this link. I just copied it. I'm going to put that in the email to you so you have that link. Um, so that concludes the presentation on MindTap, how to use it, where to go. Any questions, please let me know. Don't hesitate to call me. Um, I'll meet you at TCU, um, or we can go over this online or in person. I'm also available to come to your class uh, for a demonstration, help students log in, and help them navigate MindTap as well.